Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Econometrics. We'll be looking at GACH modeling series. The GACH modeling series will cover the following topics as shown on the screen. ARCH versus GACH models, we'll look at the background, basics of GACH modeling, how to estimate simplified GACH models, ARCH versus GACH models in relation to how to estimate them. We'll proceed to estimate the GACH main models the threshold gauge, the exponential gauge. We look at diagnostics in gauge models and how to forecast gauge models. I will also want to stress that please endeavor to watch these videos in sequential order. Please do not skip any. That will be similar to you skipping the chapters of a textbook. And you know what that means. You may not really understand much if you skip chapters of a textbook. So please try not to skip any of these videos. It is advisable that you watch them in sequential order. We'll begin by looking at the similarities between ARCH and GACH models. Both models capture the volatility of the variance, capture the conditional and time varying variance. Both deal with stationary, which is time invariant mean, and non-stationary, which involves time-bearing mean of a series. Both are concerned with the behavior of the conditional variance of an asset and how to estimate its riskiness. Both models capture volatility clustering and both have mean reverting processes. I will also want to stress at this point that it is important you watch my video collections on arch modeling for a better understanding of gauge models. Now let's look at some differences between arch and gauge models. The arch model as developed by Engel 1982 can be generalized to an HP model, which can often be difficult to estimate because they frequently yield negative estimates of the betas. Bolaslev in 1986 was able to resolve the problem of negative estimates by developing what is now known as the generalized ARCH model. The ARCH model resembles more of a moving average specification than an autoregression. This is because if you look at the typical ARCH Q model, it contains on the right hand side the lag values of the error structure. So more often than not, a typical HQ model will resemble a moving average model. The GACH model, on the other hand, includes the lagged conditional variance as autoregressive terms on the right-hand side of the model, as you can see on your screen. This is the GACH term in this case. The HQ model contains Q plus one parameters to estimate. In essence, if Q is large, accuracy of estimation is lost. The GACH model, on the other hand, uses few parameters to capture long lag effects, and by that, efficiency of estimation is improved. The ARCH model, from all that I've discussed so far, is an over-parameterized model, while the GACH model is a parsimonious model. In constructing the conditional variance of the ARCH model, it is simply a function of arch terms, while the gauge um, conditional variance is a function of both arch and gauge terms. The arch model does not capture leverage effects. However, the gauge model, talking about the extensions of gauge model now, captures leverage and asymmetric effects of good and bad news. Typically, a simple GACH model does not capture asymmetric effects, but variations and its extensions capture both leverage and asymmetric effects of good and bad news or good and bad events. As a matter of emphasis, again, please watch my video collections on ARCH modeling for better understanding of GACH models. So let's take a look at this. A typical ARCH-Q model, as you can see on the screen, as emphasized earlier on, resembles a moving average process. You can see that on the right-hand side, 
and lags of the error term of the squared error term and it shows that the variance of volatility in a given period depends on the magnitudes of the squared errors in past Q periods. And the model also simultaneously examines the mean and variance of a variable. Remember, in the arch Q model, beta naught must be positive, while beta 1 must lie between 0 and 1. But the gauge Q model can often frequently yield negative coefficients because as at that time the model will become over parameterized now the gauge pq model is an improvement on the arch model given the construction of the conditional variance as you can see here i'm not going to go deeply into the econometric permutations involved if you need to know more Please check the references at the end of this video for you to know uh, the econometric um, permutations of this um, construct for the gauge conditional variance. But my emphasis will be that if you look at the conditional variance model here, the HT, you will see that it is now a function of its own lagged value, which is this, and the lagged value of the squared error term. So the basic difference between the arch and gauge model in econometric uh, specification is the inclusion of the lagged value of the conditional variance as a regressor on the right hand side of the model. In addition, the gauge 1 1 model as you can see on the screen now and why do we call it a gauge 1 1 model? This is because it includes just one lag of the conditional variance and one lag of the squared error. So this is a gauge 1, 1 model. It is easier to estimate and it performs very well because only three unknown parameters will be estimated in this case. We have here, we have phi, we have theta and we have beta. So this is a very simple model and it is parsimonious. The GACH11 model can also be extended to a GACH PQ model, where P in this case represents the lagged terms of the conditional variance H and Q represents the lagged terms of the squared error as specified here. I follow specifications dictated by Astero and Hall in their textbook Applied Econometrics. So I'm following Asterio and Hall specification. I know that in some textbooks, the P lags are associated with the arch model, while the Q lags are associated with the gauge model. But in Asterio and Hall, it is the reverse. The P lags are associated with gauge, while the Q lags are associated with arch. So once again, I follow Asterio and all in my gauge model specification. So given a gauge 1 1 model, some conditions must hold. The coefficients of the arch term and the gauge term must be less than 1. In this case, beta 1 and theta 1, when you sum them together, must be less than 1 for stationarity condition to hold. If otherwise, if both of them sum up to be greater than 1, then you have an integrated gauge process or what is known as an eye gauge process. So whenever you estimate your model, sum up the coefficients of the arch and gauge terms to see whether they are more than one or less than one. I'll wrap up this session by just summarizing the learning outcomes. Similarities on once again. Both arch and gauge models capture the volatility of the variance they also capture volatility clustering. They are concerned with the behavior of the conditional variance, and both of them have main reverting processes. The difference is the GACH model is an overparameterized model. It resembles a moving average model. It does not capture leverage and asymmetric effects of good and bad events. These are arguments in favor of the GACH model and his extensions. 
I will always say that video uh, tutorials are insufficient. Please support them with reading. I have here some references. Please read them. If you need to know more about the GATCH model and the extensions, kindly read at least one or two of these resources. I have covered the first topic, ARCH versus GATCH models. The next topic will be the basics of GATCH modeling. Thank you for watching. Kindly support my channel. Please share the link with your friends, academic networks and students. Um, if you have not subscribed, please kindly do so. Click on the subscribe now button. Subscription is free. It's at no cost to you. Um, I will also encourage you to please share this link with anyone that you know is struggling with econometrics. Direct them to my channel so that they can actually learn from the ground up. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with the next video on the basics of gauge modeling.